There are many challenges to having a successful marriage today. This includes having a job that can take time away from the marriage and the family. But what if that job is being a pastor? We will talk with a pastor and first lady to see how they make their marriage successful. We'll be right back. Welcome to Living a Godly Marriage. I'm Von Till Green, and joining me this evening is my wonderful husband, Melvin Green. And we are very pleased to have with us two terrific people on the show tonight. Reverend Mark E. Whitlock, Senior Pastor of B Temple AME Church, and his beautiful wife, Reverend Mia. Thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Reverend Miller is the first lady and executive minister at Reed Temple AME Church. Glad to have both of you joining us tonight. So we're going to jump right in and ask questions. First of all, Pastor Mark, how did the two of you meet? <laughs> well, we have kind of different stories, but you tell yours first. <laughs> so I was working in a department store and uh, the Christmas worker. And when she came to purchase some luggage, I really felt a strong attraction. And I was really down on my luck, to be honest with you. And uh, when she met me, I, I, I tried to be courteous and professional. But at the same time, I remember when I said, I hope you see, I hope I see you again. She walked away and I said, boy, I really have hit rock bottom because she didn't respond in the way I thought she should have. And the next thing I know, about five or seven minutes, maybe even 10 minutes, she came walking or coming off of the escalator from another department upstairs. And she came walking up and she said, I, I'd like to get to know you. And I'll be honest with you, it was probably the best day of my life. <laughs> my, my story is, is, is similar. I'm a little more um, detail oriented in terms. I, I know that it was December 28th, 1982. I know we were in, uh, I can't remember the name of it. We were in a department store, Bullock's, Bullock's Department Store. I couldn't remember that name. And I was uh, buying sale luggage on sale for a, <laughs> a Jewish friend that I had. So cheap that, luggage. Cheap luggage. It was not cheap. It was on sale and it was cool. And so I was buying it on sale. And I remember he came up behind me. I heard this voice. I didn't see him first. And I fell in love with his voice. He had a beautiful voice. Then I turned around. I said, oh, the rest of the package, too. So <laughs> <laughs> I went out to get my gift wrapped and came down the escalator. And when I saw him look up at me, I, I didn't hear him say, can I see you later? I didn't hear that. Um, so, but I was all the time upstairs trying to figure out how I was going to see this man again. And when I came down, he was kind of standing in the luggage department. He went right down to the luggage department. He looked up, and I knew I had made an impression. So I walked. <laughs> oh. So let me ask you: How did you know that he was the one? I don't think I knew. I, I did think he was the one. I knew later on. But I, I thought he was one because of the way he looked at me when I came down the escalator. And then uh, we talked. I think we talked for like two hours in the luggage department. Wow. wow. I was on a lunch break and I um <laughs> I just took some more time off. And he was supposed to be working and kept showing customers away. And he had tickets to a laser soccer game that night. And asked me if I would meet him there, and I was certainly going to meet him there because I didn't know him that well. He was not—I was not going to get on the car with the man I didn't know. But when I saw him at the Will Call booth, I was looking for him. 
because he had to pick up these tickets. And when I saw him, it's like all the other faces. Oh. <laughs> I told my girlfriend when I went back to the office after meeting him for lunch that I met the man in my dreams today. Oh, that's wonderful. And, okay. and Pastor Mark, when did you know? <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you, it was, for me, uh, different. I uh, really did feel a strong, strong attraction on the initial meeting. Again, I, I measured everything based on was I successful, was I not successful, didn't feel real, real successful in those days, didn't feel accomplished, but I knew that I met this woman who I thought was extremely successful very accomplished and uh, in many ways I didn't think I was good enough and when she said yes to a date I felt like that was a great thrill for me and then we kept talking and honestly the talks are what motivated me to stay closer to her because she accepted me where I was she didn't ask about my pedigree, didn't ask about my college degrees, didn't ask about anything because I didn't have any. All she uh, <laughs> wanted to know about me, and it felt really good. Oh. Yes. And he had the right answer. Are you saved? Hey, amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. That's what I asked. And I was at the point where I. You know, I, I was 26, uh, 27. I remember being introduced to my, at my, my niece's wedding as old Beth's his youngest sister. She never married at 26. So I was beginning to feel the biological clock and then I was getting to be an old, I mean, I didn't consider myself an old maid, but I said, oh, is that how people look at me? So, <laughs> you know, I guess I'm ready to uh, settle down and get married. But he had to be, he had to be saved. He had to be a leader. Right. That's great. So how long have you been married? 37 years. But we've been dating wow. 59 years. Amen. Going on for it. And, and it's really been good. It really is. I, I think the first five years were tough because mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I did not have the best model mm -hmm. of marriage and my mom and dad. They got divorced, at, I think, when I was 14 or 15. But my dad pretty much so uh, did not live a Christian life. And so he was constantly out in the streets, drinking and smoking and caravanning. And so I did not have the mop. And so when my mom and dad got divorced, to be honest with you, I, I thought most marriages just don't last that long. And they certainly weren't permanent. So I, I said to my wife, I hope this lasts five years. And that was big. <laughs> It's the opposite because my parents were married 53 years and I have, I'm the youngest, all my brothers and sisters, I think I have at least one brother who needed to be divorced, but none of them got divorced when my parents were living. Interesting enough, none of my brothers and sisters have ever gotten divorced. One has never gotten married, but all of us have been married, married, married. I mean, my younger, my brother next to me, I think he's been married 34 years. And then my sister married probably close to 30 years. So yeah. uh, clearly we all will have some success. Right. right. And and how many children do you have? I know they're all adults now, but. I was a bit of a bad boy. So I had a child before I got married to my wife. And uh -huh. we have two together. And don't ask me their age. My wife. Okay. I, 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 we have three sons. Three sons. Okay, that's great. So 37 years, first of all, congratulations. That's quite a blessing. That's quite a blessing. So what can a couple do, Pastor, to make it 37 years or longer in a marriage? You know, the, the Bible is clear about marriage. It says, you know, a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife. Literally, I, I believe what that means is, is that we start anew together, bone of each other's bone, flesh of each other's flesh, and we begin this new journey together. And for me, that that is clear. It is the art of compromise, 
Mm-hmm. It is valuing yourself. Remember, I didn't value myself when we first got together. And then I saw that she valued me. Then why would I have married someone who values my me more than I value myself? And so as I began to grow, then I clearly knew that the scripture says to have a wife is to have a good thing. And so I had a good thing. And I wanted to impress my wife on a daily basis. And I go out of my way even today to try to impress my wife. That's great. That's great. So, Reverend Mia, if I may ask you the same question. When he asked you to marry him, did you have any doubts about it or was it a quick yes? It was a quick yes, except he had been such a confirmed bachelor. I waited till I heard him tell his mother that he had had proposed to me before I told anybody else. I wanted to make sure he was sure. I was sure, but I wanted to make sure he was serious. So, yeah, but... After I proposed, I literally called my mom five minutes later. Yeah, so please, uh, right. Immediately. But I had made a, I wasn't going to tell anybody until I heard him. When I heard him say, tell his mother that he'd asked me to marry him, I knew it was real. Well, both of you are very busy in ministry. In fact, we're so blessed to read Temple because you all are really active and you love the people. And that's that's really why Von Sill and I talk about that a lot. In fact, just past Sunday, we're in church and we see pastor preaching and you're up singing in the choir, Reverend Mia. Praise God. I love to do. But we know ministry can keep you all busy. So how do you keep your marriage? How do you make it a priority? For me, it's date night. We have a date night once a week. We also, on that date night, we we, we don't talk about the church. We, we talk about everything else but the church. And we spend time dealing with our marriage. I'm always talking about our marriage. Number two, we actually do ministry together. And I value her opinion about church management sermons. We do sermons together every morning at six o'clock. Either I'm preaching and she's praying or she's preaching and I'm praying. It's worked out well for us to make God the center of our marriage. I think our belief and and faith in Jesus Christ isn't just a difference that we have in our marriage, but it is the difference because, you know, we were, we were, we were young. We weren't even 30 years old. I think he had just turned 30 when we got married. And so we had a lot of growing still to do. And both of us had our own little personal issues that, you know, everybody brings into the marriage, the junk from previous marriages. I mean, from previous growing up, and so we had our our own stuff that we had to work on. And so I think prayer together, the the two of us in prayer with 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 the Lord as the third allowed us to work through our own personal challenges. And we loved each other's strength always. But the other thing is to be able to allow the other partner to work through his or her challenges through whatever weaknesses. They bring into the into the marriage, and only only faith in Jesus Christ can help you do that. Yes, I think marriage is is teamwork, working yeah. together, loving, supporting, helping each other. That's so important. And Reverend Mayor, if I may ask you, you were pretty accomplished already when you met your husband, correct? <laughs> so, so I just want to know. The Bible tells us that we should submit to our husbands, right? <laughs> So was that a difficult transition for you mm. to I, come up on to come under his leadership? I don't think I had a problem with the leadership because if you know Pastor Mark, he's always been a leader. So he's gonna lead, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was learning the fine art of, of influence. I think we as men have an incredible influence over our spouses. But we don't always have to be in the lead. And if you have a, a, a partner who also respects your judgment and what you have to say and doesn't just say it's my way or the highway, that mm-hmm. makes people, right. you don't mind following somebody who you know you've had input into the final decision that was made. That's excellent That's because good. that trips a lot of women up, especially women who are, who are accomplished mm-hmm. and have carved out their own 
careers and then to come under the leadership of a husband. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult transition for some people. I know it was for me Mm -hmm. (laughs) in a sense because I, the whole idea of submitting, first of all, I didn't really understand it at the time, what that really means. Mm -hmm. And so it was a difficult transition for me. And I think that trips up a lot of women, that submitting part. The beauty of it, the beauty of it, Bonsil, is that submission to a man who, who loves you as Christ loved the church. The church, exactly. Amen. Amen. You can't have one without the other. Right. So you can submit to a man who loves you like Christ loved the church. My mama used to always say, make sure your, your, your husband loves you just a little bit more than you do. Now, that was, a, that was her kind of coaxing way of saying that he loves you like Christ loves the church. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Pastor, let, let me turn the corner and, and ask an interesting question. What's the most romantic thing Reverend Mia has done for you? Uh, <laughs> great question. <laughs> the most romantic thing that she's done for me. That you can share with the world. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you keep it spicy. <laughs> uh, most romantic thing that she's done for me, outside of making dinner, to be honest with you, because that, that for me is is, 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 is is important. The most romantic thing she's done for me is to let me be me. Oh, mm. I like that. That that was cool because she she is an accomplished woman and I had to look up to catch up with her. I had to Look far to catch up with her. But she never put me down. She never lauded her educational achievements over me. And while I went back and, and finished Amen. a lot of education, probably more than her now. But she <laughs> she, 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 <laughs> she did not ever, she never pointed out that she was this, this, and this. So for me, that was romance because I think for men, we are much more sensitive than women. And so women can say things to us, to us that can crack us like a twig and or cause us to go into uh, dark places. But she has always tried to lift me instead of depress me. She's always tried to liberate me instead of enslave me. That to me is romantic. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. That's and that's excellent. so true. The the wife is the husband's biggest cheerleader. That's for sure. And notice I said cheerleader, not jeer leader. <laughs> <laughs> and Reverend Mill, the same question to you, if you would answer that, please. I think the most romantic thing he did for me, that, and let me give, give you the most recent one. You see this ring? Oh. <laughs> when we got married, he, he, he told you that he had not accomplished a lot. So the first engagement ring that he bought was kind of small. And he always wanted to buy me a big diamond. And so for my 37th, I had another engagement ring, but for my 37th wedding anniversary, he bought me this ring. Oh, that's nice. Love it. That's great. That's great. That's wonderful. Well, we just have a few minutes left and we're going to, I'm going to ask Pastor, uh, what advice would you give young man today that's getting married? Don't have sex before marriage. Number two, have a long conversations that explore the meaning of her life learn as much about her essence because we spend a whole lot of time learning about the physical but we must learn about her essence we must learn about her joys as well as her sorrows and foibles when we put ourselves into her shoes then we achieve intimacy intimacy for me is being into her And once you learn that, then you will find the woman underneath the woman that you met. 
Because often we meet the surface woman. We need to meet the God woman. And that's not necessarily the flesh woman. It is the soul woman. And when we meet her soul, when we meet her essence, when we meet her internally, then we have the chance to meet the real woman. And as as the husband, you know, I totally agree with you because I, I see part of my role with Von Seal was to help her to grow and develop closer to the Lord as, as well as to each other. You mentioned something earlier, Pastor, about serving in ministry together. This was something we talked about earlier in our marriage. We said, we know the Lord has brought us together. What is his plan for us to do together to serve him? And we never dreamed we'd be doing this or teaching marriage classes, but how do you feel about that? Well, uh, to be totally honest, the first (laughs) question he asked me, which caused me some concern, is if he wanted to know if I could cook. (laughs) 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 So, So that was concerning to me. But It didn't take me long to realize that he was a wonderful man, that he truly was a man of God, and that he was a good person, not just to me, but I watched how he talked and treated other people as well. Mm. And and what really sealed the deal for me is his former mother-in-law and father-in-law were crazy about him, and they had very positive things to say about him. Yeah. So Uh, after after my former wife passed, my Actually, my former mother-in-law introduced me to Von Seal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so the Lord really had a hand in it. I jokingly say a, a man in Maryland met a woman from Virginia at a church in Washington, D.C. And I knew she was watching me. She used to make me nervous. And I remember one particular time I used to, out after service, I would sit on the bench by the coffee t- station and she came, he was talking to me one morning and she came over and poured some coffee and she was leaning in like this, <laughs> trying to hear. I thought she was trying to hear what he was talking about, saying to me. So that made me a little nervous because he was married to her daughter who had passed away by the time I met Mel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and so I knew she was watching me for some reason, but I had no idea it was because she she was setting us up or trying to set us up. <laughs> Matchmaking is what she was doing. <laughs> well, when I met you, yeah. I'm yeah. A, I mean, I met I, you, you were incredible. You are both yeah. examples of what marriage is about. You you really love, and you an example of Christian marriage. Thank oh, you. Thank we you. appreciate thank that, you. Pastor. Appreciate that. And we didn't even pay him to say that. <laughs> 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 so, and Reverend Mia, I'm going to ask you, the same question Mel asked Pastor. What advice would you give to a young woman who's thinking of getting married today? Say, don't conform to the world's standards of what Mr. Wright, but by the renewing of your own mind. And don't be conformed to what what the world says you should be looking for. The position, pocketbook, all that. Make sure that he's a man of God, that he fears God. Because if he has the fear of God, which is reverence, all all for God, then he will know how to treat you. So those are the things that are most important and not what car he drives, how big a house. Look at his heart. That's what God wants to look at. Yes. Yes. And if he has a good heart and is willing to work to press you you every day, all that other stuff will come. Right. That's excellent. That's the one thing my mother said to me, to make sure you marry a good Christian man, not just in word, but in deed as well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's and good advice. That's, that's a, definitely, definitely true. So thank you for that, Reverend Mia. And, and I know, Reverend Mia, that as the scripture says, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's, that's yes, definitely. And if I may share, and I think I've shared the story before, I have a disability, and that was a concern for me. I wanted to make sure that it was something that he could deal with. And I remember we were having dinner one night, and I asked him about that, and he said, it's not your disability, it's God's ability. 
Oh. And that that really sealed the deal for me. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's great. A great answer. And he said all the right things. And he's been true to the promises that he made me, true yes. to his word. I can honestly say that. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 challenged by what God says to 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 love you as Christ loved the church. And I know it's difficult sometimes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's difficult to love all of us sometimes. That's, yes. right. that's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Well, any other comments or advice you'd like to give married couples today? Pastor and Mark. by the way, Pastor, when we were dating, we made a commitment, piggybacking on something you said earlier. We made a commitment that we were going to stay abstinent until we got married. Mm-hmm. And God has honored that. And God has really blessed that. And it was more of a challenge for me, (laughs) if I'm going to be honest about it. (laughs) It It takes two to keep that promise. (laughs) And the Lord, three. (laughs) One thing that I'm going to say for all married couples is that to maintain a marriage, you have to work at being married. Mm -hmm. Yes. One thing that I, I try to do, again, is impress my wife on a daily basis. Number two, I, I make it a priority for the date night. We we say we, we both love to work. We we get energy from working. We love serving the Lord. We love serving the community. But unless we're serving each other, we're not going to have a prosperous and fruitful marriage. And so we take our date night seriously. Yes. We don't let anything get involved with that. And and I've learned over the 37 years to shut up. And listen, if I say that to the brothers, shut say up. Say that again. <laughs> listen, we don't have to answer all the mistakes. You don't have to answer all the world's problems. You don't have to answer all of her problems. But sometimes you just need to give an affirming nod and listen, because she's already worked it out before she came and talked to you. So all she's yeah. doing for me is asking for a sounding board and an affirming nod. And so that's one thing in our house. Oh, that's great. So this time went by quickly. So I just want to thank both of you for agreeing to come on the show and share your wisdom that okay. you have thank you. learned over the years. So we yes. appreciate it very much. Yes, um, really do appreciate both of you all coming and giving us words of marital wisdom. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, as we close, we want to welcome our viewers to send their questions and comments. Email them to livingagodlymarriage at gmail.com. Also, you can watch the show and other episodes on our YouTube channel. So as we close, we wanted to remind you, and please remember that living a a godly godly marriage marriage is the the best best marriage. marriage. Thank Thank you you again. again. Bye-bye. God bless.